This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. The Turkish Super League has finally returned from its Corona hiatus. Hello, Turkaholics. Welcome back to Football All Turka. My name is Kam Bayezid, and I am joined once again by the man of the law, Burak Sizgin, Uzer Dinger, and Jakub Marafolo. Guys, welcome back to the show. Football is back. Are you happy? Have you missed it? No, haven't missed it at all. Wish it was still over. I'm sulking. I'm moody. I'm not happy at all. <laughs> uh, what about uh, the other two here uh, who had uh, more pleasant returns to the football pitches for their uh, personal uh, favorites? I was anxious, but um, we did well, so I'm, I'm quite happy. What about you, Burak? Uh, how did you went? In, how did you go into it um, from the position Fenerbahce were in, and how did you come out of uh, this? Opening match, I should say, really to the third, uh, the third part of this season, really. It was it was good to have football back. It's a welcome distraction. I wasn't expecting much, even though we were playing Kaiseri, who are just shameful bastards. Anyway, you know my disdain and dislike for them. And I thought, okay, we've got Tahir Karapunar, pretty much the third coach of the season after. Uh, Arsun and the other guy whose name I forgot that was interim for two matches so I went, went into it not expecting much and, and came out happy and thinking yeah I think you know Gustavo is probably one of the um, top central midfielders in the Turkish league play right now so I'm like I'm glad we have him and yes yes what can I say it was, it was a win so it was good to win again after like six games so yeah um, a happy Friday night. Yeah, good return for Fenerbahce to the Turkish football pitches with 10 men because after just 10 or 15 minutes, Ozan Tufan got sent off. So uh, to still win that match is, is still definitely a feat despite the fact that Kayseri, of course, are arguably the weakest side in the league right now. Still a good win for them and that'll uh, boost Fenerbahce's confidence a little bit. And, of course, as we learned... Uh, over the last couple of weeks, Trabzonspor may be looking at a European ban. They, of course, appealed that, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But if that happens, that does mean that Fenerbahce could get to the Europa League through the league. And they've done uh, a good thing there with winning this match because both of their rivals for that fifth spot, Alanya Spor and Besiktas, both lost. Besiktas lost at home against Antalya Spor. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's the first home defeat for Sergen as a coach of Besiktas. Um, quite a few players missing for uh, the Black Eagles with Burak uh, Yilmaz being uh, suspended of course they had to play with uh, 10 men because Given Yalcin started up front um, <laughs> so another great return for, for Besiktas to the pitches although I did personally I, uh, enjoy seeing young kids like uh, Ersin Destanolo and uh, of course Ridvan Yilmaz getting an opportunity and hopefully they'll continue to get opportunities Ersin probably will since Karius has left, so it's either him or Utku Yuvakuran, and I personally uh, am keeping my fingers crossed that uh, Sergen keeps uh, fate in Ersin, because he's a 19-year-old, under-19 international as well for Turkey. Uh, he has uh, definitely more upside, I think, than Utku does, but we'll have to wait and see on that regard. Galtrai, not a great return to the football pitches, but we'll get that a little bit uh, on that a little bit later because some really uh, bad, devastating news for Galtrai in particular coming out of that match with two injuries. One in particular will be particularly uh, devastating. Um, and then, of course, Trabzonspor opening with a 1 3 win against Gustepe. That's a fantastic away win. That was definitely one of their hurdles. Uh, in their bid for the title. 
and also Bashakshir, as I had alluded to before. 2 0 win over Alanya Spor. So the two teams at the top, Bashakshir and Trabzonspor, both getting solid wins against tough opposition. Jakub, how do you feel now with us going into these last couple of weeks and uh, we're going into match day 28 next week? So, uh, how many games are left? Seven, I think, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, how are you feeling now about the chances? Bashakshi here are also just keeping that momentum going. You're both at it to a two horse race right now. Are you counting out Galtrai following their defeat at the hands of Rizespor and more importantly that devastating injury? Or do you still think that uh, Sivaspor may creep in there? They're playing right now. That match has not finished, but they are in the lead against 10 men. Um, what, how, what's your overall feeling right now regarding uh, Trotten Spor's title op- uh, chances? Sorry. I mean, never, you know, I, I'm never too, um, too excited. Because I, I, I can always, you know, imagine stuff going wrong. That's just the pessimist in me. And, um, you know, I think, I think it's, a, it's like a, two peop- uh, a two-team race at the moment. Um, I, I can expect Skulls right to do something because uh, I can see some Fatih magic happening. Um, but, you know, them missing Muslera. I don't know how long Andone is gone, but uh, Muslera especially is going to be a big loss. They're talking about like eight, nine months, and um, he is like one of the best transfers that 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 the Turkish league has done, that Kalsra has done, in my opinion, because he's always quality. Mm-hmm. And um, I I haven't I haven't watched the Başakşehir game, so I can't really talk about that. But but um, we have uh, you know they have also shown that they just can keep going on, and a lot of people thought that. Um, with uh, with no supporters in the stand, that they would have like a kind of advantage because they are used to playing without supporters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that I think that Sivaspor might be you know tagging along, but I I don't think that um, that that they will be really title candidates. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. The Turkish league is also always one that is full of surprises. Uh, that that's what makes it so fun. Um, as for Trabzonspor, you know. Um, I was I was anxious, you know. I was uh, I was scared a bit because I was uh, I was scared of uh, you know the players having no match fitness. Uh, Trabzonspor didn't even play any uh, didn't even play any uh, friendly games before, you know, to maybe get the players to a little bit of match fitness. But um, the team the team looked really good. Uh, Gustave games are always difficult because Beto always plays like he is like the reincarnation. Uh, maybe not the reincarnation because he's not dead, but he he plays like he plays like all the best keepers uh, in one, uh, like Oliver Kahn, like Buffon and everything. And uh, this game started with Trabzonspor started you know attacking immediately. We could have like been up two 0 in the first ten minutes, but Beto is just so good in goal, and we just kept you know trying to um, trying to break them, and. Watching the team play, it was it was nice to see that um, even though we had like a, we had a couple of big uh, absentees, uh, Sosa couldn't play because he had some nagging injuries from uh, um, from training. So Abdulkader Parmak played, and the Aya has the same issues. And the Aya was injured a couple of weeks ago, uh, still uh, still trying to come back with, uh, with come back to his uh, you know regular match fitness. But the team just looked great. Uh, it was pretty much the team that. Everybody expected to play. Um, we had uh, Wakayame just uh, opened uh, opened the go- opened the scoring sheet. Uh, started with a great performance once again. Um, was taken out in like the 65, 65th minute or something because his performance kind of dropped. And I think that it was a pretty smart decision um, because the team just um, you know got got back on 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 what they uh, what they were trying to do and just keep possession because we had uh i was laughing at uh, i was laughing at ozan tufan getting a red card and it just you know it just bit me in the ass like five like 15 20 minutes later with uh, guillermo getting a second yellow uh which in my opinion i think that the second yellow was was a was an odd one but i also think that the, that the first yellow could have been a red card because he pretty much uh just you know st- uh, uh just Pretty much stood up uh, on the ankles of uh, of the Gustafa player. Um, all in all, um, you know, pretty pretty strong performance by pretty much everyone. 
uh, Serlot uh, gave a great big assist in quotation marks. Uh, had the ball and you know ran, ran like like 60 meters, like 55 meters or something. Caused the penalty. Ekuban uh, kicked it in. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to see that the team uh, is still able to play um, with the same quality that they had before before the leagues were you know postponed. Um, we have a big game tomorrow against uh, against Fenerbahce. And I think that that game is pretty much going to guarantee, uh, going going to show how how the team will play for the next couple of weeks, you know, because um, doesn't matter what doesn't matter how big the challenge is, the the Fenerbahce games are always much more important to the team, uh, to the fans and to the city. And if if we get um, we we won uh, at home two one, so we don't really need a win um, as long as it's a, it's it's a good score for us. But uh, having a win at Kadukei, um going through to the finals would be really great. It would be like the cherry on top. Yeah. And uh, I, I think the team deserves it. And it's in the cup, of course. Uh, the, the match tomorrow is uh, the, yeah. fir- the second leg. Uh, yeah. The semifinals, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Trabzonspor with a great win. Like you said, also went down to 10 men. It's a way at Gostepe that's never easy, especially now that they've opened their new stadium. Um, they've been a very tough opponent uh, in their own on, in their own grounds, and they're always capable of taking some points from the big team. So a statement victory, perhaps. We'll see if tomorrow Trabzon can uh, reaffirm that statement, perhaps against Fenerbahce in the Turkish Cup. And then, of course, Başakşehir. We should not uh, underestimate their win against Alanya Sport two 0 making uh, easy work of them, at least on paper. Uh, Başakşehir are in a good position and yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this whole thing impacts them if it's going to end up benefiting them um, and you know regardless the knowledge uh, uh, that they have if they finish second behind Trabzonspor that they could be guaranteed a Champions League group stage ticket and going with that 40-45 million euros I think it's also going to definitely uh, boost some morale within the club there maybe not necessarily in the dressing room but definitely uh uh, people working uh, at the club. Um, has there been any update whatsoever on the whole UEFA situation with Trabzon? From what I heard, they uh, they made their statements and uh, and uh, went to CAS. And um, you know what what the support uh, what the Trabzon sport uh, reporters are talking about is that there was an issue with like a certain payment that was uh, supported uh, that was supposed to go out to uh, to Mare Mustad. Uh, the previous president, um, there is talk that um, Muharrem Usta has agreed to, you know, whatever helps the team forward. But, you know, with Turkish media, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Um, because if it's really the issue with, if it's really an issue with him and he has agreed to, you know, uh, accept whatever, whatever makes the team go to Europe, then it should be solved. But, uh, you know, I won't believe it until I see it. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see, but we'll definitely keep you updated as that uh, entire situation continues to develop. Now, let's move on uh, to Galtzrai, because I think the big news coming out of this weekend not is not necessarily Bashakshi here and uh, Trabzonspor and also Sivaspor kind of uh, affirming on that first match back that they are definitely in it to win it. But it's probably uh, Galatasaray's first their loss away at Chaiko Gizespor. They definitely had good momentum uh, before we went into this whole Corona break. Of course, they did end uh, that last match 1-1 against Besiktas. Uh, sorry, 0-0 against Besiktas. But that's not a massive disaster, a derby. Uh, as long as you don't lose those, it's fine, I guess. But then, coming out of this quote-unquote break, you really expected Galatasaray to hit the ground running. But, uh, yeah, nothing, yeah, that wasn't uh, the closest thing to reality, at least. I mean, uh, yeah, Muslera picked up an injury, a devastating injury. Uh, what was it, after like 25 minutes or something like that, Ozar? I think it was about 15, yeah. 15 minutes. But even before that, we already saw, like, Galtzrai didn't really show that much going forward, and Rizespor were really hungry. They uh, seemed to smell blood, and they, I think they had like two or three opportunities already l- 
going into that that injury and of course that injury resulted uh, out of one of those dangerous looking attacks I think it was Milan Škoda who collided with uh, Muslera they both kind of went for the ball in the middle of uh, the penalty area with their foot and uh, yeah what happened with Muslera exactly what did uh, he did he break his shin or or what was it so unfortunately uh, the x-ray results show that he broken his foot in two places his fibula and his tibia so it's I think it's a similar injury to w what we've seen in the past with uh, Emrak Baba. And typically, a recovery time is, is going to be at least six months. Um, also, got to unfortunately take into account Muslera is going to turn 34 tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Um, so, age isn't really on his side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, assuming everything goes fine and his recovery is, is all on track, hopefully by the end of the year he'll be, he'll be able to play again. But, I mean, in that time, there's a whole kaleidoscope of things that that are on the line for Galatasaray. I mean, this season, without having Muslera in goal, I mean, we can almost kiss goodbye to our prospects of 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 of, of continuing on this title race. Because I totally agree with what you said. I mean, before this Corona bullshit kicked in, Galatasaray were flying high, form was excellent, Falcao was scoring goals week in week out. Everything just seemed to be going in the right direction for us. Then we had the break. And we thought, you know, hopefully that the, the players and the team have kept on training, have kept kept focused on the on their prize. But you could tell from the first minute in this game that Galatasaray were just half asleep still, if not fully asleep. And Rizaspor were fully motivated, fully organised, and fully focused on this game. And 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 Galatasaray really did nothing wrong. I mean, sorry, did nothing positive against against Riza. Um, it was so disheartening to see. And Muslera, despite going off the pitch after 15 minutes with this horrific, tragic injury, was still the best player on the pitch for us. Um, every, every single player, I, I think, played shambolically. I, 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 I would say Emrak Baba was um, the only player who really had a consistent effort, and he only played for the, lot, for the second 45 minutes and had a good shot blocked at the end of the second half. Um, Terim made some good substitutions at half-time with bringing on Akbaba, bringing on Andone. Uh, but you, ah, they just, it seemed like there was a disconnect between him and the players. There was a disconnect between what it was we were trying to achieve. And like, I don't know what kind of football we were trying to play. But Rizas were completely outclassed Galatas, right? And, and deserved to win the game. Um, but for me, I mean, the loss of three points is just three points. It's just a game of football. I, I don't care. But the tragedy that happens with Muslera and the time that we're going to be without Muslera is something that's sent me into de mild depression overnight. Honestly, I couldn't sleep last night thinking about how we're going to recover from this. Um, I'm not saying that Okan Kocuk is necessarily a bad goalkeeper. I mean, I don't know him well enough. I think very few people have seen enough of him to have an informed opinion. But... Muslera is such a special player for us, off the pitch, on yeah, the he, pitch. He came from Bursa Spor, right? right? He was, he was, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he, I think he yeah. took over when uh, Harun left, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, it was said at the time, and I looked into him at the time, he had some good performances at Bursa, but goalkeeper has to play and has to impress yeah. on a regular basis to, be, to get that, the praise from the fans that, that give him the confidence. And, okay, he actually saved the penalty, don't forget, against Roda, yeah. but... He, he kind of rebounded it back, right back into the player's yeah, uh, path. So that was kind of unlucky. And, and, and a huge um, red mark for Galatasaray's defenders. It was Umut who tweeted this, actually. I didn't notice it at the time. But no, a single Galatasaray player came back to defend the rebound. It was just uh, wide open for the two Rizzo guys to, to jump in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to say that Rizzo... I mean, I hope Rizzo get relegated. I hate those guys. They <laughs> contribute nothing to, the, nothing to Turkish football. And... They're nothing positive to the league. They're just a bunch of hacks. And I said this, I think, even a few months ago, saying that on my, on my list of candidates to go down, they were my top. And I, I, I feel it even more now. There's a fire in my soul. So I hope Rizzo, <laughs> Does this have hope anything to do ready? with the statements of the, the Rizzo Spore president? Oh, my God. Yeah, that, I, we could talk about, we could devote a whole episode to that. Well, I'll quick, um, quickly mention but, what, uh, what he had to say for our listeners who might have missed it. Uh, maybe start with what he said last season. So, so okay, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, because I feel as though I've, I've made a con considerable effort to forget all these comments. <laughs> but uh, he, he made some totally disgraceful statement after the game, saying that he, he wouldn't have let the referee off the pitch um, 
without without use of a gun? Is that what he said? I think, I think like last that. season after the the whole uh, Rizespor Galtry match, and granted, the, the the referee there messed up big time on several key positions. Uh, I think after that match, he did say something along the lines, if I had a gun, I would have shot him. And That's it. That's I, it. I don't even think he got fined. He didn't even get fined for that. And this is the same guy who's still the, the club chairman now. He, I mean, guys should be arrested and locked up for some something like this. This is, this is, this is the state of RZA. This is everything that uh, encapsulates RZA. And I hope they go down. And I hope they go down in a ball of flames. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the, the, of course, you know, this is very important or it's uh, devastating to Galatasaray's title chances because we all know Muslera throughout the years I mean I think Jakub said it the best he's probably been one if not the best transfer in this decade for sure and maybe even in Turkish football history just the longevity alone and and the hand he has had in so many trophies for Galatasaray Uh, I I saw somebody on um, on Twitter I think say something along the lines like he already got you one star uh, I thought that was interesting, yeah, that's, and, and, and that's really true. Yeah, and this doesn't just put you know uh, a bomb, so to speak, under Galatasaray's title opportunities now, but it'll also take him out most likely for the first half of next season. And then you still have to wait and see how how he comes back from injury. What does this mean for Galatasaray during uh, during the summer? Are they going to have to look into getting a, a, a new goalkeeper? Or are they going to put faith in Okan? Uh, apart from that penalty save, how did you feel about his performance? Yeah, and just one more thing to add to that. He was our um, football Alaturka player of the decade yeah. in our poll from a few months ago as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, okay. So apart from the penalty save, he I think he could have done better at the second goal as well. He looked like he was fumbling around a bit in front of the goal line. Mm. Um, I think he he, he but, did p- pounce on it and he like tapped it in his own net. I think, but um, yeah, might have been yeah. a little bit too difficult. I think. I think uh, it's, it's it's hard to judge a player when he's brought in in such extreme circumstances. And you see, he sees his colleague and his teammate break his leg in two places. Suddenly he's thrown on there with all the expectations, all the pressure, and we need to win this game to, to keep our title charge going. It is hard to judge it based on, on that performance. And I, I hope fans can be um, kind to him with their praise. And I, I hope that he doesn't feel <clears throat> too you know, emotionally bogged down by all this. Wanker. This is not the ideal circumstance to bring a player in. Wanker, wanker. Wanker. <laughs> Was I the only one who heard that? Hello. Yeah. Did you just say? I did. <laughs> did you just say? I, wa- I heard that too. But what was going on there? I thought it was a joke, but I was I, waiting for the punchline. I think <laughs> Burak was talking to his TV. Or so who were you calling a wanker? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I was talking. To someone on WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, okay. Was Do you know what? I, I've not set my microphone to my Yeti and it's still on my um, fucking Mac. That's why. Uh, okay. Well, you sound fine, actually. So it's not too bad. Anyway, so we know anyway, that so Burak's, Burak's, Burak's friend Yeah, I was thinking, what, what, what did Paul Okan Kuchuk do to you, Burak, to deserve such abuse? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's 75 enough, minutes of football. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, let's get back uh, to the topic at hand. So, yeah, Galtry lose 2-0. They are now six points back the leaders. Um, seven more games to go. Of course, that is not a massive gap. They can easily still bridge that. But are mm. Trabzon and Abashakshir going to falter? Or And, and, and uh, this I basically... Tra- I mean, easily yeah. is, is t- statistically easily. Mathematically, they could... Easily bridge it. Oh, absolutely! In reality, it's just that the, yeah. the 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 we don't have the wind in our sails anymore. The, yeah. and, and on top of that, having this blow, I mean, Gala had the best defensive record in the league. Let's not forget. I think only conceding twenty goals in twenty six games. Mm-hmm. Um, hundred percent of that is to, due to do with Mustera. Our defense is shaky at, at the best. And Marcao already that, picked up an injury our, exactly. recently. We're yeah. out with Marcao. We're out with Lundama. So we we've lost our central defense. So it was all Muslera, all, all, all Muslera. And then for this to happen, it's just, it's such a sledgehammer blow. And it's such a tragedy that it's happened to this guy, to Muslera, someone who has universal love and appreciation from everyone in the league. You saw how quickly all the rival clubs put out uh, Gishman Scholz messages, Fenerbahce, Jebeshikdash, Trabzon, everyone. Players, you know, you had David De Gea tweeting about Muslera saying, get well soon. I mean, this is a, this is a serious, serious earthquake for Fujimbom. And it's going to... And I, and I don't know if we have the mental strength or even the talent in the squad 
yeah. to overcompensate to, to compensate for this in the next seven weeks. Yeah. And imagine they implement a foreign rule um, oh, no. in the summer. Yeah. What are Galtrai right going to do then? Kill me now. Kill me now. Yeah. Anyway, so definitely a big blow for Galtrai in their title aspirations, but they're still in it at least when it comes to uh, the, the, the playoff spot for the Champions League. Um, and the Champions League spot itself, of course, you know. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, of course, what happens there with with, uh, with Trabzonspor and all that. But uh, Europa League and uh, playoff for the Champions League is still within their reach. Okay, so we spoke about the top of the table mainly. Uh, just a couple of notes. I, I do think uh, something similar happened with Bistec that we saw at, at Galtrai Ting, that Bistec, especially in the first half, um, not... 100% there, uh, had a little bit of bad luck with the deflection on the first goal and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, something similar there. It's curious to see that some teams definitely uh, have been able to keep their eye on the prize and other teams maybe lost focus a little bit during this whole uh, pandemic uh, break, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but let's uh, look at uh, Sivaspor right now. They are about to finish or just half finished. It finished 1-0 to Sivas, that did. Okay, so Sivas Spor with that win now on 52 points, which is two more than Galt's right, and four behind the league leaders. Um, the most important things to take away from the relegation battle, from the results this weekend in the relegation battle, I think, is, of course, Riza Spor's win, who with that climb out of that relegation zone, they are now three points clear off of the drop-off bar. Uh, Malatya Spor, who we've been tipping for months now uh, to go down ever since, really since sacking Sergen Yalcin. Uh, I should say, the second half of the season, they've been absolutely dreadful. They have now dropped down in that bottom tree. Ankara Guju didn't get much uh, further with their draw, 1-1 against Konya Spor, which was really a relegation dogfight, and that ended all square, like those types of matches so often tend to do. Uh, so Ankara Guju stays in that bottom uh, tree as well with 24 points, but they uh, are just two points away from salvation, so they're definitely still in it. But if we look at the form curve of Malatya Spor, things aren't looking good for them. Uh, they, they weren't already looking good going into the whole break, uh, and now, of course, coming out of it, they just picked up where they left off, and that's losing matches. Kaiseri Spor with 22 points, they are also four points away from salvation, and... Yeah, they're not looking too shabby, uh, too too good either. So, uh, not uh, yeah, things aren't looking great for those teams. And then we have a lot of teams that are like kind of in the belly of the of the league table. They're kind of out of it for Europe, but they're also kind of safe for relegation. So we're not going to spend too much time on those matches. I'm quickly just going to run down the results. So we had Gustepe, Trabzonspor ending 1-3, Başakşehir, Alanya Spor ending 2-0, Sivas Spor, Denizli Spor 1-0, Rize Spor, Galatasaray 2-0, Besiktas, Antalya Spor 1-2, Fenerbahce, Kayseri Spor 2-1, Malatya Spor, Kasim Pasha 1-2. So that's one of those relegation uh, candidates. Malatya Spor losing against the team is in the belly of the table really right now. Uh, Kasim Pasha at home and against Sterberly winning at home against uh, Konya Spor I was wrong there it was Gaziantep who drew 1-1 with Ankara Gujju. so Konya losing Ankara Gujju picking up a point guys not too much I want to spend time on there in the relegation zone I think uh, as the weeks progress we will uh go a little bit more in-depth on that we will also take a closer look at the teams that are looking to come up from the First division, so to speak, uh, the second division, really the second tier of Turkish football. Hatay currently in the lead there, but that league isn't picking up for another week or two, if I'm not mistaken. I'm mistaken. So it's just been brought to my attention that we actually haven't spoken uh, about the Fenerbahce game yet. <laughs> I, th I thought we covered that pretty much already. So they beat uh, Kayseri Spor, who are dead in the water. Uh, Ozan Tufan got sent off after 10 15 minutes. They still managed to win. Burak get. Uh, Give us your thoughts on, on the match, on the team performance, and uh, how are how you're looking towards uh, the rest of the season. Do you think Fenerbahce have a shot at uh, qualifying for Europe, given what you've seen? I think we have a decent shot at qualifying for, for Europe. We could get in via, via the Cup if we manage to beat be Trabzon tomorrow, which is going to be very tough. Or if we manage to creep up the league a little bit with... 
maybe teams like Alanya and Besiktas, you know, directly above us, if they kind of drop some points and we manage to pull a series of wins together, we could creep up into like that potentially fifth or fourth spot, uh, depending on how Galatasaray do. They are, you know, six points in front of Besiktas. So it would take a, a drop off by them and a huge loss of form. But to answer your question, uh, yes, I think we have a, a decent chance as long as we play well. Looking at the team sheet on Friday, I was happy to see Fardy in the starting 11. Uh, no sign of the best left back in the world, Hassan Zinho Calderon. I don't know what's going on there. I've heard no further news with regards to the rumours of his supposed switch to Galatasaray. So I don't know what's happening there. So we put Dennis Turic at left back. And he is a naturally left-sided player, but he is a attacker midfielder by trade, you know, and we tried to use him on the left. So he had an okay game there on, on, on the left with, I think it was um, Gary Rodriguez in, in front of him with Fradis starting on the right, with Nabil Dirar as our right back, as we've let Maurizio Isla go. He's gone back to his home of, of South America. And we are obviously, we're missing Max Cruiser. He had a foot injury. Apparently he went in for appendix surgery today. Alicoch has confirmed. So I'm not sure if the rumours of him setting off a smoke alarm in the Riva and thesis led by smoking Nargile is true or not. Um, but we do know that he's had uh, appendicitis surgery. So get your shorts on now to Max Cruiser. I fully expect the TEF Fair to tweet um, get your shorts on to Max Cruiser just like they did for uh, Muslera on on Saturday. Um, so I think that's the first time a TF Affair has tweeted something like that. Obviously, we um, wish Mustera well and a speedy recovery, as as well as Florian Andone. But where were the messages for Max's appendix operation and when Sadok Chifpanar did his ligaments in? We want some fucking consistency. Um, and speaking of consistency... Um, we could have been 1-0 up inside the first minute. Ozan Tufan dragged the shot wide. I think that's just a lack of match fitness and him showing that he's never going to be an elite midfielder for Fenerbahce, but he's going to be okay in that role. He then gets sent off. Uh, first game back after three months uh, for a red card I can't argue about. Um, I don't think there was any intent from him. The, I think it was, was it on Mensa, if I remember correctly? Um I can't remember which Kaiser Espo player it was on, but the Kaiser Espo player was a little bit too quick, and Ozan looks to be carrying some timber at the moment as well. He does look a little bit more chubby than he used to pre-lockdown, which doesn't surprise me. He's someone who's susceptible to weight gain, and he just proposed to his girlfriend, now fiancé, so maybe they celebrated with too many kebabs and baklava. I don't know, <laughs> but he does look a little bit tubby to me. And I can't argue the red card. Um, I think the referee was right to go to VAR and under the letter of the law it's dangerous play it's a red card now if they could you know do that consistently week in week out I wouldn't have a problem but they fucking don't and this is why I have a problem and some people were then saying well Mensa should have been sent off for swinging an arm into Mehmet Ekic's face and that didn't look like it was a you know a red card to me, maybe it could have been a foul because he swung his arm and struck Mehmet Ekic in the face because that was part of his momentum. And then the same people are complaining that when that happens to Falcao, that should be a penalty. Fuck off. Um, Mensa then scores a great free kick to make it 1-0. Um, hats off to the guy. In off the bar. The best goals there are is when they're going off the bar. Prior to that, typical Fenerbahce hit the woodwork twice. We had our... Like, Invisible striker, Mev the Dadinch, hits the post. And then we have uh, the general, Gustavo, smashes a shot. And it, I think it, Kaiser Sport keeper gets a touch, puts onto the bar. And it sounds so much better with no fans. It like crashes off the woodwork. So I'm there thinking, okay, here we go. One nil down, 10 men. Fred is playing well. He's, you know, doing some few tricks. He's getting the ball, using it well, beating players. And... But just before the goal, so he gives the ball away just before Gustavo fouls the Kaiser Sport player to give away a free kick. I think he did an unnecessary step over. So maybe he was, you know, getting into a rhythm, still thinking he had a good game, but he came off second half. And we weren't doing too much second half creatively. You know, it's hard for 
Tahir Karpunar to put his stamp on the team for someone who's then going to be their interim for these remaining games. So fans, <clears throat> fair about your fans who are saying, where's our manager? Where's our manager? You know, calm your tits, have a glass of shut up juice and say, wait till the end of the season, which is what Ali Koch has announced tonight. The manager we're thinking about can come at the end of the season. So Tahir Karapunar, who's going to be taking over the youth team, he's got his coaching badges, so he's just there to help us get to the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But so then, what, do you, what are you thinking? Then? Is it going to be Errol Bulut or someone that's currently occupied? Well, there's talk of this um, uh, Ned Nad Belcher. <clears throat> no, I've completely butchered his, the pronunciation of his name. Ned Nad, probably. Um, there's still talk of potentially Jorge Jesus, the ex Benfica manager. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I'd like it to be, you know, someone who who's a bit tough. So, but anyway, you know, we're talking about, you know, hopefully someone decent comes in. There's a few transfers that come in, but you're getting towards the end of the game, and what happens? Emre Belizola comes on, and what does he do? He creates the penalty. So his pass leads to the handball that has the penalty given that Vedat dispatches, and less than like a minute after the restart. He passes it into Gustavo, who smashes a ball in to the net. So, Emna's going to be retiring at the end of the season. He's announced that he's retiring from football. And what does he do? He comes on and completely changes the game for us. So, I am worried about who we are bringing in to be that kind of game changing midfielder or game changing player that can have that effect. I was tweeting one of our uh, Fairbacher fans, uh, Frankenbacher, lives in America. Hope you're well, brother. Um, saying, I think it would be symbolic if in one of the last games, you know, Emre, who is the captain at that time, is subbed off. And who does, who comes on in his place? We bring on Omar Farouk Beas for his debut, hopefully in a home game. You know, no fans there, but maybe that would be better for him to, you know, come on in a game where there are no fans because he's seen as a great big hope for Farabache. Um, young player, he's come up through the ranks. Um, He's avoided that complete shitbag of an agent, Jake Malagiasaju. Fuck you, Jake, if you're listening to this. Um, so, and he stayed with Fenerbahce management as well. So, hopefully, we get a glimpse of him as fans. It wasn't the best game of football, but you do what you do to win. And it just shows how important Gustavo is to us. And we go into tomorrow's game against Trabzon at home. A little bit of a high, you know, it's always good when you can turn a game round in such short amount of time. Um, odds on is suspended, maybe that's a good thing. We might see uh, Emre and Gustavo start in, in that game for us. I think um, our biggest chance of winning something this season is definitely the Cup. So I would say let's start Emre in that game, see what we can get out of him, see what he can create for us against a very good Thrubs on side, um, see what happens. So... That is my review of the game. Wasn't great. Highlights, Gustavo showing what big character he is, what influence he can have on the game. Faraday playing well for the like first half, showing us that he is a bag of tricks, but he can put some passes together. He can beat a man. And an Altai putting off some great saves in goal as well for us, because Kai Sida could have been 2 or 3-0 up had it not been for um, Altai's great shot stopping um prowess yeah. in missed there. opportunity for Kaiseri to at least uh get out of that well get close to getting out of that relegation zone a, very, that, a, a big missed opportunity against 10 men for almost uh, 80 minutes most definitely i think the amount of disdain that Azad has for is there's probably the same that i have for Kaiseri after they've like been butchering us for the last season and and a half if you may I do want to talk about the offside position that led to Muslera getting injured. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Fatih Terim has come out and said, why didn't they raise the flag? Why didn't the ref stop it? I, I know you have to let play go on. The player, you know, if the player is one and a half metres in front of the last defender. Let's start by saying that 1.5 metre thing is complete bullshit. It's something that Fatih Terim made up. Um, maybe he's taken a few too many blows to the head, but the 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 rules on this because we're talking about the law here, and as our listeners know, I'm a man of the law, so I want to read to you verbatim 
from the EFAB why the play was allowed to continue as it was and why a flag wasn't raised. So for people who aren't aware of the rules, what it says in EFAB is delaying the flag slash whistle for an offside offence is only permissible in a very clear attacking situation when a player is about to score a goal or has a clear run into towards the opponent's penalty area. And in this instance, the ball was played in. You could argue the Rizzo's player was offside. He probably was. But it was a clear attacking situation where the player receiving a ball, Tunai Turun, I think it was, had a clear run into the opponent's penalty area. So that is why play was allowed to go on. And if an assistant referee delays a flag for an offence then the assistant referee must raise the flag if the attacking team scores a goal, is awarded a penalty kick, free kick, corner kick throw-in, or retains possession of the ball after the initial attack has ended. So in this instance, unfortunately, it ended with, um, I think, was it Skoda colliding with Muslera, and then the ball came, rebounded out, so that meant the initial attack was over, and that is why the flag wasn't raised instantaneously but of, i think yeah. we can understand um faulty term post-match be kind of being stuck with his hands in his hair or the little hair he has left it's just a normal human reaction i think he just he's looking for something you know and just to yeah it's normal i think yeah, it's I, a n- the, normal the, human the behavior thing is that the player the the, the the player was offside and it's it's an offside situation that resulted in a double leg break that that's the that's the makes it even sadder than if it was just normal during the field of play. It is, it is, and it's um yeah we just can't bend the rules of terrible. course because somebody broke his leg. You know they already did that last year. Exactly the same thing happened again in, in Riza last year. It's funny, well funny, tragic really. Fuck but you, uh, Riza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, I think uh, we will uh, call and it. Uh, and the player, the player that had yeah. that, it was a uh, Samudia, wasn't it? That, that that happened to Brian Samudio last year. Yeah. 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 And you know why that? You know Samudio's favorite recording artist, don't you? No. It's Phil Collins, because he wrote a song about him. Don't break my heart. No. Su 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 Samudio. There we go. I know oh, this. no. Okay. Oh. Uh, on that note, that will do it for us for this week as episode of Football a la Turca. We will be back next week covering match day 28 of the Turkish Football Super League and also the results uh, midweek in the Turkish Cup. Go check out the league standings online. Uh, you can find it easily. Uh, anyway, for all of us here at Football Aturka, I wish you all a good night and a good week, and we'll see you again next time. Get well soon, Muslera and Andone. From all of us here at Football Aturka. <laughs> <laughs>